If you have been on Twitter over the last couple of days, you will have seen the hashtag buy a paper. Um, and the people who, or many of the people telling you to buy a paper, um, are from some of the country's most disgraceful, I suppose, um, right-wing tabloids. We're going to mention later that, of course, there are many, uh, m many media outlets who are struggling during this period of time um, who, you know, we would, we hope survive. Um, but the Sun isn't one of them. Let's go through some tweets from, from Sun journalists. So we've got um, the political correspondent at The Sun, Ryan Saby. He tweets, journalists, production staff, printers and distributors work 24-7 to deliver the country's brilliant newspapers, providing a lifeline of trusted information for millions during this crisis. A paper costs less than a cup of coffee. Do your bit. Hashtag buy a paper. Um, he tweeted this with both a Times and a Sun front page, so it seems like probably a, a Rupert Murdoch News International or News UK now it is. Uh, email has gone round. Um, we can now go to Tom Newton Dunn. Uh, his tweet, thus ends another extraordinary, harrowing and difficult day in journalism because they're the true victims. All of us working on <laughs> newspapers. Do you know what I mean? It's like Boris Johnson's got into ICU and he's like, this is such a difficult day for journalists because yeah. he's such a close friend of all of us. Like, oh, Shut the <laughs> fuck up. You were, you, uh, you, were, you, know, you were saying that junior doctors should be you know, out of the door. Shut up. Exactly. All of us working on newspapers at the moment are doing our level best to provide trusted information about hashtag COVID-19 crisis. Please support our industry and hashtag buy a paper. Um, dreadfully sad that Tom Newton Dunn has to worry during this period. That, went, to uh, eat, went, went to Eton. Did he? I didn't yeah. know that. Good old um, Tom and, Newton Dunn. Anyway. Now from Dan Woodson, executive editor at The Sun, Britain's brilliant newspapers provide a lifeline of trusted information, trusted information um, for millions during this crisis. A paper costs less than a cup of coffee. Do your bit and keep journalism alive for future generations. Hashtag buy a paper. The best thing you can do for future generations, for our children, um, I'm probably not going to have any, but is to allow The Sun to die a slow death. Um, death. Because it is... It's never played a positive role in society. Uh, let's look at the, the key messages here. They're trusted. So what they're saying, they're trusted and they'll help us get through the COVID-19 crisis. Uh, before going to you, Anna, I thought it'd be good to get a, a few examples. No, go um, for Where it. they've certainly fallen short um, of these standards. Um, I mean, so one quite recently was during the general election. Um, Tom Newton Dunn, so someone who, who wrote one of those aforementioned tweets, um, who was feeling rather sorry for himself that he had to cover the COVID-19 crisis. Uh, he wrote um, under the title Hijacked Labour, uh, this, this strange, bizarre conspiracy theory that links me, you, um, a bunch of sort of left-wing organisations, um, and said that this was, you know, the, the shadowy organisation um, that surrounds Jeremy Corbyn. It's actually part of his Wikipedia page. I just wanted to get that up because I think it's quite funny when you have a section of your Wikipedia page called Far Right Conspiracy Incident, um, and then you're tweeting about trusted news and why we should buy your paper out of solidarity. I'll just read the first couple of sentences. In December 2019, Newton Dunn wrote an article for The Sun titled Hijack Labour, in which he support, reported that former British intelligence officers had produced a chart alleging that Jeremy Corbyn is at the centre of an extraordinary network of hard left extremists. It later emerged that the ultimate source included the anti-Semitic far right website Aryan Unity, not particularly subtle there, and the Millennium Report, the latter described by Vice as an anti-Semitic conspiracy site known for publishing articles with titles like The Jewish Hand in World Wars. Um, so this was a big splash that Tom Newton done. Uh, put out in the politically important moment of a general election. He wants us to support his paper out of solidarity so the country can have trusted news. I thought it would also be useful to go back to their performance during the last significant global pandemic, um, because obviously they are saying that, you know, in, in, a, in a time of, of national crisis, when health is at stake, it's important to have trusted print newspapers so that people don't get caught up and succumb to conspiracy theory and fake news let's look at a couple of headlines quite um, right from during the aids crisis um so to, i'll just read out two of them u.s gay blood plague kills free in britain so that's the sun during the aids crisis in the 1980s um, and in case you're worried about fake news straight sex cannot give you aids official um they also in the 80s this was in 1989 
uh, ran an editorial that said, at last the truth can be told. The risk of catching AIDS if you are heterosexual is statistically invisible. In other words, impossible. So now we know everything else is homosexual propaganda. And you might be saying, you know, you're, you're looking back into the dregs of, dregs of history. Um, this is the 1980s. Of course, the sun are far more progressive on issues such as AIDS and HIV. Nowadays, um, I just want to go back to a story um, from 2019 um, where Gareth Thomas, uh, a Welsh rugby player, it was revealed by a journalist to his parents that he was HIV positive before he was able to tell them. Um, and in an interview with BBC Radio 5 Live, he strongly Im implied that this was the son. There was no one really has any doubts that it was it was the son who outed is the wrong word to use in this context, but who told his parents that he was HIV positive before he was able to do so. So the son, a scum, do not trust them inside or outside of a global health pandemic. Um, and whilst there might be some media organizations, we would like to support um good riddance if if they die during this period that would be the one good outcome from COVID 19. aaron yeah no there's something there's one more thing as well we haven't got a quote of it but it's um it's again from some of their reporting on the aids crisis in the 1980s this is from february 1985. all homosexuals should be exterminated to stop the spread of aids it's time we stopped pussy footing around now that That's was yeah that was quoting an anonymous psychologist uh, so obviously they didn't say that the anonymous oh, psychologist so there was said sort it. of yeah right <laughs> the anonymous psychologist now there was you, plausible you, deniability yeah now if you think I'm I'm making that up uh, it's cited it's in a book it's in a history about the Sun newspaper uh, I, I I quoted it in um, a video I've done in terms of a recommended reading list stick it up your punter excuse the name but it's about the first twenty years uh, at the Sun newspaper under the ownership of Rupert Murdoch horrific horrific you know. There are many, many outlets. There, are, I don't want a single person to lose their job as a result of this crisis, except people at the Sun. Sorry, it's it's the one thing. If it disappeared, it would make Britain a much better country. Generally speaking, I like to say, look, you can't just defeat ideas by this institution going or this person sort of disappearing from public life. The Sun is cancerous. All right, we'll do one last one. So this is them. Uh... Very recently, they've obviously gone all out behind uh, this idea that we should clap for NHS workers. Obviously, you know, I've been clapping every every Thursday at 8 p.m. No thanks to the Sun telling me to. Uh, but let's go back to 2016, um, and the Sun were writing "sack the docs." Um, this is an editorial. It's not, you know, it's not someone. It's not a comment piece they published. This is the official line of the sun. The new all-out pay strike by junior doctors is a declaration of war on the government using patients as cannon fodder. If any die or even suffer, the young medics responsible must be struck off. Um, however, if anyone dies um, because of the decisions made by this Tory government, it would be politically outrageous for anyone to suggest that blame could possibly um, be put on the doorstep of, of Boris Johnson. Uh, the Sun only like to hold public servants to account uh, if they are working on the front line and, you know, not good pals with their billionaire backers going on holiday on huge yachts, um, which reminds me of Aaron's very recent video on, who was it? Who was your recent video about? Some, something David Geffen, David Geffen. Who's spent his coronavirus <sighs> lockdown on a huge fuck Five, off yacht. $590 million yacht. He's worth seven and a half billion. Um, but he's like, I'm going to spend, I'm going to spend, I'm going to see out, you know, uh, the coronavirus on my boat. And it's like, what are you going to do for food? And when you run out of fuel and clean, clean drinking water, you know, you can't just detach yourself from this crisis. And, uh, and we won't just be going back to normal in three months time. I recommend anybody who's watching right now after this show, not a moment before, go and watch it. I suppose there is a serious story there here as well. And then, you know, like, Many media organizations are suffering due to COVID-19 for two reasons, really. Um, one, that you know people aren't buying physical newspapers. And for many organizations, it's the physical newspaper that subsidizes the online platform, even if it's the, plat even if it's the, the website where more people get the news. Um, but also, and probably more significantly, in fact, it's the advertising revenue has completely collapsed. Um, because whilst you know, people are looking at lots of screens and reading the news, um, no one wants to pay for ad space because no one's really buying anything. Um, and also people think it's potentially because coronavirus is a bit of a downer. So when you're reading about, you know, current death tolls, you're not that keen on the buying the pair of trainers that they're advertising you on the right of the screen. Um, let's go to a couple of tweets about sort of like the 
the bits we should take seriously. Uh, so Jim Waterson tweets, Channel 4 imposes severe cuts to ensure survival. Income from TV ads has already halved. Cuts of £150 million from content spend around a quarter of total devastating for TV production companies. Some shows cancelled, plus £95 million of cost cuts, 10% staff on furlough. So that means they're, they're off work getting paid by the government. And analysts estimated that Channel 4 had the finances to survive for only six months um, without making cuts. Um, also, the Jewish Chronicle and Jewish News have both gone into administration. Um, Aaron, which parts of the media will survive COVID-19? I think it's interesting. Um, anybody who has a paywall, I think will be generally okay. I think if people were willing to pay for your content before, I think you're generally okay. Then The New York Times, The Washington Post. Um, anybody who has a, a membership kind of base model, uh, whether it's The Guardian or whether it's us, so it's people that voluntarily are trying to support a, a media outlet because its values resonate with them. I think they're okay. But I think... I think websites that basically operate on advertising have big problems for the reasons you've already outlined. And then daily print newspapers, I mean, they were already dying. In the late 1980s, the Sun had a daily circulation of 4 million. It was going to go below 1 million in the next year or two anyway. It's going to go below, well below 1 million. We got a half a million. I'm, I'm not going to speculate. Well below 1 million this month. We'll find out around February, uh, April 20th with the circulation numbers. Uh, so I think I think principally it's going to be online clickbaity sites and daily print papers have big problems. Mm -hmm.